We've all seen the TV shows where crimes are solved within the hour, but... Biggest misconception is probably the amount of time that it takes to generate results. There's a lot more that goes on in our laboratory than just analyzing the evidence. There is a lot of work that goes into a case before it's handed over to law enforcement. And these people come to us with highly advanced degrees. Some of them have masters in forensic science or PhDs in some biotechnology background. Solving crimes using forensic science like this. And we look for things like blood, semen, and saliva because those are not only great sources for DNA, but they're the types of things that are generally transferred during a violent event. Body fluids are tested. And that dark blue reaction indicates the possible presence of blood. As well as objects like this knife. So we may be interested in knowing whose blood is on the blade, and we may be interested in knowing whose cellular material is on the handle because uh, we want to know who used the knife and who was on the receiving end of the knife. Larger items like bed spreads are often tested using a fluorescent light. Semen in particular has certain properties about it that allow it to be very visible under different wavelengths of light. In the toxicology lab, scientists are testing blood samples for alcohol. Or anything where we think the person might have ingested either uh, regular drinking alcohol or any other sorts of alcohols. Scientists not only determine what the drugs are, but the amount present. In order to test them, we do need more sensitive instrumentation. We're very fortunate to be, um, I, I think, sort of on the cutting edge. Uh, in the state of Kansas and uh, even around the country. Scientists also test various drugs and pills that come in as evidence. Sorting them, counting them, we'll document all the imprints on them and then I'll test to confirm what the content of the pills are. In another room, scientists examine bullets, cartridge cases, and other parts of ammunition. So I've had guns that have been burned, buried, uh, out of water, uh, you name it. This microscope allows scientists to do side-by-side -side comparisons. This is where we would bring in samples that have been collected um, by various uh, fire department agencies um, where they suspect arson may have occurred. Samples typically come in a can like this with burn debris such as wood or carpet. It's then tested for ignitable liquids. Sedgwick County is fortunate to have a state-of-the-art facility in our own backyard where evidence can be processed locally without having to be sent away and put in a waiting line.